Hello everybody, Johnny here. Let's do some math together. Now, Dewey has been hearing about something special with fractions for a while, but he doesn't quite get it. So we want to help Dewey to understand better, okay? So, what Dewey's interested in is fractions. Fractions are so tricky. One thing about fractions, though, is dividing fractions seems to be very funny. There's something about invert and multiply. So we're going to think about that today. Now, math has rules. So this whole thing about flipping a fraction and multiplying it to find the answer to a division problem that has fractions in it, uh, we've got to understand it a little bit better. So I'm going to give you one and we're going to talk through it. Okay? So I'm going to start with 3 fourths divided by a half. We want to know that as some number. Okay? Now, 3 fourths divided by half means how many halves fit into 3 fourths. So hold, put that in your brain and think about that for a moment. How many times can you get a half into 3 fourths? All right? Now, what's interesting about this is that 3 fourths divided by a half could also be written as 3 fourths divided by a half. Remember, this is 3 divided by 4. This is 1 divided by 2. This is 3 fourths divided by 1 half. So let's hold on to that a bit because that could be really useful. All right? Now, something else we know is that whenever we multiply, multiply a number by 1, say we have 5 times 1, it will equal itself. We also know that this happens with fractions too. So 3 fourths times 1 will give us, give us 3 fourths. Everything's really good. Now we're going to need a 1 for this one. So this is the tricky part. What I want to do is I want to take 3 fourths and over 1 half and I want to multiply it by 1 to give us the number we need. But I want to play with this right here, okay? This 1 is going to be very important for us as we think about inverting and multiplying, okay? So you would probably agree with me that if I did 3 fourths divided by 1 half and I multiplied it by, say, 1 over 1, I'd still have 3 fourths divided by 1 half. Everything's really good, so I haven't changed any of the rules. Now I'm going to change something, though. Instead of 3 fourths times 1 over 1, what if I did 3 fourths divided by 1 half times 2 over 2? It should still be the same thing because we know that 1 over 1 is 1. We know that 2 over 2 is 1 as well. Now I'm going to add something to this, okay? So instead of writing it as 2 over 2, let's take our 3 fourths divided by 1 half and we're going to multiply it by 2 over 2. But we're going to play with the number a bit. Instead of 2 over 2, we know that 2 can be written as 2 over 1. 2 over 1 is the same as 2. For this to be equal to 1, the numerator and the denominator have to be the same. So let's go ahead and make this 2 over 1 over 2 over 1. Okay, I want you to look at that for a moment and think about what happens now. Because this is the interesting part. This is the part where the invert and multiply works. Okay? So I'm going to rewrite this one more time. I'm going to write 3 fourths times 2 over 1 over 1 half times 2 over 1. So I just changed this statement here to this statement over here. Okay, let's look at what happens here. Okay? Now, if I continue, I get 3 fourths times 2 over 1 over 1 half times 2 over 1 is the same as saying, take a half and double it. If you take half and double it, you get 1. We like that. We know that any fraction that has a denominator of 1 is going to be the sum or the total of whatever the numerator is. So let's look at that. We know that this is equal to 3 fourths times 2 over 1. 
Here comes the big part. This is what we started with. This is what we have now. We've changed 3 fourths divided by 1 half by using some properties of fractions and whole numbers and identity principle to come up with 3 fourths times 2 over 1. So this dividing 1 half, inverting the 1 half and multiplying it becomes 2 over 1 times 3 fourths. So that's where invert and multiply comes from. Okay. Now, one big word that you have to hold on to when you understand this, this 1 half and this 2 over 1 are reciprocals. And reciprocals are very important. Reciprocals allow you to get to 1. 1 half times its reciprocal gives you 1. That's what makes it work underneath it all. I hope this was interesting for you. Think about how this can be helpful when you're working with fractions. We'll do some more math sometime.